time to introduce our speaker, Ms. Carrie Goodrich. Carrie is the CEO of Performance Initiatives. Her, fo her focus is on corporate, youth, athletic, and individual fitness programs. Carrie represented the U.S. in Olympic weightlifting and was a member of the U.S. women's Olympic weightlifting team from 93 to 2000. Carrie is a founder and coach of the Coastal Empire weightlifting team in Savannah, Georgia. She volunteers her expertise by working with youth of all ages and backgrounds, using athletics to help them develop confidence, learn to focus, outline, and achieve goals. Carrie is an active member of the Savannah Christian Church. She currently volunteers her time organizing and implementing leadership development seminars for community organizations and local businesses. Carrie has served as team leader for the 2010 USAW 17 under Pan Am team, 2011 USAW Youth World Team, and head men's coach for the 2012 USAWF Youth World Team. Carrie developed Performance Initiatives Incorporated out of, an, out of her desire to share and give back to a community that had so, excuse me, so heartedly embraced her. Her, envision, her vision is to model and implement Christian principles in a three-tier three approach to assist people of all ages, physical and psychological abilities, and enrich their lives physically, psychologically, and spiritually. Performance Initiatives creates programs that model integrity, servant leadership, community, and excellence to capture the interest of others, to learn healthy lifestyle habits, and grow individually in a group atmosphere. Using Olympic weightlifting as one of the tools to capture young people's interest where fitness meets education. Welcome. <laughs> My voice will go in and out. I lost my voice this weekend, but it's doing pretty good so far today. Um, thank you for having us, and thank you for your support in this community, because what we're going to share with you towards the end of this lecture today um, is a result and because of your support and what you've been doing. I just want to introduce a few of the athletes I brought with me today. They're going to help with demonstrating, because I'm not keen on sitting still very long and listening to somebody lecture. I like doing interactive things. So if anybody has athletic clothes on or they want to jump in and practice with us, they are welcome to. But these guys um, have been, I see a table right back there. <laughs> these guys have um, been working hard. They just got back from um, the world team trials and youth nationals prior to that. And their schools gave them permission to come here today and demonstrate. So um, Michelle Thomas, would you stand up please? Michelle Thomas is eight years old. She goes to Savannah Classical Academy. She went to the Youth Nationals for the first time this year and represented. And they used her photo on um, the, the IWF, the National Weightlifting Federation, used her photo to introduce the Youth Nationals this year for 2014. So she was their cover person. <laughs> Um, to her left, I have Mr. Jalen Duncan, lives in the 69 kilo class, he's in the 13 under. Jalen took a silver medal with the Youth Nationals. Um, I'm very proud of the change in Jalen's life in the last year. He's um, really been attentive in building his character and keeping his grades up and worked very hard on the platform this summer and um, did some personal records at the World Team Trials Saturday when we were in Pennsylvania. So he'll be helping us demonstrate and answer questions as well. Terry started lifting when he was seven. He was a lot smaller, he's about half that size. And so he's grown a lot. He's moved up onto the 39 kilo class from 27 kilos. And at the World Team Trials, he broke four national records. Wow. He holds national records in the 35 kilo division. He moved up a weight class this year because he drew a little. And he broke four national records there. Um, surprised me too, he looked awesome. <laughs> I have Ms. Nyerka Goodwin over here. This is um, Michelle's older sister. Michelle started because um, Nyerka brought her into the gym. And Nyerka used to, um, I love her like my own child. She's awesome. But she used to be a short, little pudgy girl. We were looking at pictures not too long ago, looking at the difference, and not very confident. And she's just really grown into a fine athlete, but also a very mature young lady and um, AB student. She's doing well in school, representing Coastal Middle School. She took silver at the Youth Nationals. And she did personal records um, at the World Team Trials in, on Saturday. Awesome. So I'm going to actually.
actually bring these guys up here for a minute just to show you a little bit of what we're going to demonstrate. We're going to go over some of the benefits of what weightlifting does for you and how it helps you burn body fat. Um, and there's a few ways you can do that. Everybody knows that muscle is leaner than body fat, but did you know that when you have muscle mass, you burn 7 to 10 calories per, bound, per pound of lean muscle versus 3 to 5 calories of, per pound of body fat. So while you say, well, a couple calories, it doesn't matter. But if you add it up over a week, over a month, and over a year, you're burning an additional 10 pounds a year. And so that makes a difference just from working out three to five times a week. And this, the research shows that even people, I have a dear friend named George Flanagan, I don't know if anybody knows him, this gentleman is 97 years old and he still does his weight training and resistance training. And he does body weight training, he does his little dumbbell workouts, um, he's overcome cancer three times in his lifetime and he's been a huge supporter yes, thank you. and encourager for um, with our performance initiatives group. Um, and he was going to be here today, but he wasn't feeling too well this morning, and then he didn't have a ride to get here. So he was going to demonstrate some of the elderly exercises for you. <laughs> um, but So what we want to show you is how even from New News Age, where you don't have to lift big, huge, heavy weights at a young age, but you can start healthy habits throughout your lifetime, all the way up through someone, uh, Mr. Flanagan's age at 97. <laughs> So even at my age, over 30, um, <laughs> that you can continue past a competitive weightlifting career and still stay healthy and fit and the reasons that you want to do that and how easy that can be for you. So here we can look at the numbers. So what I was talking about over time, it adds up that 450 to 900 more calories burned per month or 5,400 to 10,800 more calories burned in a year. That's three pounds of weight loss. And then if you're burning more calories, but you're eating healthier, so your caloric intake is less, then that can even add up to be more. And you know, as we get older, um, my athletes don't know this yet, but the rest of us have found out, our metabolism isn't as high as it used to be. We're not eating those Snickers and, and ice cream at night and not gaining weight like we used to. Um, so as we get older and even after 40 and 50, when our metabolisms and our hormone levels slow down, this makes a huge difference. There's a few myth busters we also wanted to talk about um, that women ask me a lot about, that weightlifting builds bulky muscles and I'm gonna look like a man. So um, Nunu and Nayarka, could you stand up for me please? Do you think these young ladies look like men? <laughs> weightlifters, Olympic weightlifters, female athletes that do weightlifting, all of your top elite athletes, all of your, your dancers, your cyclists, they all do strength training. And it's the type of strength training that they do mixed in with power training, which is plyometric work, jumping on boxes with a weight vest, um, doing sprints, doing agility work. All that makes a difference. It's totally different. We're not talking about bodybuilders that are just doing high reps, heavy weights, and a lot of supplements to build bulk. So we're not talking about that at all. We're talking about how can we be healthy and fit and independent for the rest of our lives. So um, we're going to break that one. Thank you, ladies. You can sit down. Some of the other myth busters that I get asked about all the time about weightlifting, especially for um, young people, uh, is the injury rate or the power. So what we're going to talk about is Dr. John, Gar John Garhammer did this research, and it has been phenomenal, and it's the top in the, in the world. Uh, about the power input and output from weightlifting and different lifts. So when you see Olympic weightlifting, you see how bench press is the slowest power output, and then you look at the snatch, the clean, and the jerk, those are the Olympic lifts. It has the fastest power output. So you're looking at speed, strength, and agility all in those lifts. And that's what these athletes are doing. Um, and also, if you look at the world in CrossFit nowadays, and if you look at athletes in any sport, even cyclists, they are learning how to do the cleans, the jerks, the snatches, what are overhead squats. All of that is incorporated to enhance, enhance their lifestyle, enhance their sport, whatever it is, and to make them fitter and stronger. And it doesn't mean you have to compete at one and a half times your body weight. And it's, you just have to learn how to do it effectively that works for what your goals are. And if you look at the injury rates, um, sports injury statistics, 
out of 100 participants in school sports, you see the top one is track and field. You go down, you see football, gymnastics, handball. You go all the way down to the bottom of the list. Weightlifting and weight training are the lowest injury rates. Because when you work with a coach and you learn the techniques, you learn how to do it properly, and you learn how to do it effectively, and you have very low injury rates. The, great, the thing I like doing and sharing with um, our athletes and those that we work with um, is the proper technique and how to make it fun for the rest of your life. Sports training can reduce condition symptoms as arthritis, obesity, diabetes, osteoporosis, back pain. Uh, my husband has diabetes and he used to work out every day until I married him and then he said he never had to go to the gym again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got you for life, I don't need to go there anymore. Um, but then not too after, long after that, uh, he learned that his diabetes was something that was, he was born with, that he had to figure out how to control, and he was back in the gym again, like it or not. So um, he found out, he doesn't like to be in the gym that much, but he found out three times a week for 45 minutes a day, he can stay off insulin. And if he controls his, um, what he eats, and he eats organic, fresh fruits, healthy, non-sugar, non non-processed food, and drinks lots of water, he doesn't have to go on insulin at all. And he, he's been doing that for six years now. So that's been huge. Arthritis, my mom, um, I can use my mom and my grandma. My grandma at 80 years old started weightlifting to combat arthritis. Weightlifting and swimming and water aerobics. And at 84 years old, when she comes and visits us at Savannah, she still comes to performance initiatives and uses that little five kilo bar, does a two pound dumbbell just to say hi to the kids and, and see what she, show them what she's been doing. So you can go from until you're able to start to walk all the way through your entire life to help enhance your, your health. Um, back pain, I can give you a testament for that. I started in Olympic weightlifting from being hit from a drunk driver. I had a back injury, they wanted to do surgery. And fortunate for me, there was a coach at the university that said, no, you don't need to do that, I can help you. And he started me in strength training. And that's actually how I got into Olympic weightlifting. But I never had any surgeries, I never had any problems with my back after six months of strength training. And I maintain that through the rest of my life. Um, obesity, obviously, Nayarka, if you don't mind, she, she used to be on that side and she started working out and look at her now. She's beautiful. My niece also, she lost 50 pounds. Um, she's pretty good. So it not only helps you look good, be stronger, but builds your confidence. Um, but you can also do a lot more things in life that way, have more energy. It improves your glucose levels, is what we were just talking about. Diabetes is me. We have, um, we have a girl who is 10 years old, and she just was diagnosed diabetic. And it's really, really hard trying to explain to a 10-year-old why you have to drink water, why you have to take your insulin. Why you, but if we're all doing it together as a team and drinking water together and eating healthy and not tempting her with that things, and she's doing her weight training, which helps keep her blood sugar level down, um, she can get on the right path. She's doing better in school. She's thinking clearer. She's getting her assignments turned in. She's on a much better track now. It improves your sleep. Who would not like to sleep better? So <laughs> when you're sleeping, regular exercise, when you're regularly exercising, it actually has an effect on your hormones, and it helps you to sleep quicker, sleep deeper, stay longer in your room sleep, and you awaken less often in, your, um, in the nighttime. The healthy state of mind sharpens your focus, is what we just were talking about. It reduces <coughs> mood fluctuations. Um, you know, some people, as we get older, or hormone changes, we might go through depression or um, stress just from the change of life. You know, maybe just my friend adopted three kids all at once. You know, that's a big lifestyle change. So there was some stress going on there that they hadn't planned on or didn't know about before. Um, it increases the dopamine. It increases your serotonin levels, so it affects your mood improvements. Um, so whenever I'm having a bad day or something's just bothering me, uh, I have a friend that's like, oh, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, no, I just want to go work out. I'll be okay. <laughs> Once I work out, I'm completely fine. I can be around people and, and uh, talk about <laughs> Strength training just two to three times a week. Um, you're talking to a fanatic that loves to do it, and I could be in the gym 24-7 and always find something different to do and enjoy it, but I know not everybody is like that. 
So if you can just add in two to three times a week, 30 minutes each time, you can make the difference in increasing your hip and spine bone density, increasing strength, increase your dynamic balance. You can reduce risk in falls. A lot of times I hear people say how bad it hurts their knees to go upstairs or how their hips hurt as, or, um, as they're getting more into business and less into the physical activity. But just two to three times a week strength training will take care of that because it it's also strengthens your bones, but it builds those muscles stronger that support your joints and hips. So it alleviates that problem. It sharpens your focus, increases your energy. Who wouldn't want to increase energy without having to drink caffeine all the time? It's natural. And of course, we already talked about sleeping better. Um, so here are some of the things we can consider the options of doing. Body weight exercises, and this is where we're gonna bring our demonstrators up, and if anybody else would like to join in or have them teach you how to do it, you are welcome to. Terry, can I get you and Jalen to come on up here? All right, so you have push-ups. You wanna demonstrate a push-up? And if anybody asks about a girl push-up, I will make you drop. We don't do girl push-ups. There are military push-ups, there are modified push-ups, but every girl in my gym will do a military push-up. So, or you will start modified and build your way up. Um, there are also handstand push-ups. I'm gonna give that one to Terry. Oh, how about take your shoes off though, since we're here. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> if you can't quite do a handstand push up, you know a lot of people travel, or you're at home, or you just don't have time, it's late, or maybe early in the morning, you don't want to see people, you want to do stuff at home. There's also um, wall walks. Um, Jalen, will you take your shoes off and do a wall walk, please? And while he's getting ready for that, Nunu, you want to come on up here and take those collars off that five kilo bar? I'm going to have you demonstrate an overhead snatch squat. So you always want to tuck your shirt in when you do these in public. <laughs> So the wall walks, we're just walking up the wall, walking our hands into our stomach touches the wall. And this is also, if you're learning handstand push-ups, this is the beginner way that we start. And then you come on down and go into a push-up. And then we would repeat that for a series. So those are different options. <laughs> Miss Nunu, you want to grab that bar for an overhead snatch squat, the five kilo bar? So CrossFit's made this very um, popular. And so she just did a snatch, which Whoa. is one of our Olympic lifts. <laughs> and then also, um, Nyerica, can you grab that medicine ball and hold it overhead and do a traveling lunge, please? So extend your arms out straight. So you can walk around all day long like that. If you're walking through your office, you can hold your computer overhead, your briefcase, the books you're carrying. We do this also sometimes. Um, my cousins, my female cousins, when they were little, we just put them on our shoulders and do traveling lunges around the house to get them to quit crying. Um, so there's different ways you can do it. There's all kinds of things you can add to make it fun in the family. Um, resistance tubings, you can always use those for resistance. Um, we didn't bring any today. We use them for stretching we don't, and re rehab for injuries. And then we're getting to our favorite part is the free weights. There are lots of things you can do. You can do all kinds of dumbbells. We didn't bring a kettlebell today, um, but Olympic lifting, these guys can definitely show you. Would somebody like to take that 15 kilo bar there and do a clean and jerk? Just move the, yes. Go ahead and move that stuff out of your way. Carrie, 15 kilos, how, how much weight is that? 15 kilos is about 35 pounds. So one kilo is 2.2 pounds. So what Terry just did this weekend to break the national record was um, he jerked 62 kilos and he weighs 39 kilos. <laughs> um, Jalen, can you take that bar there and do a thruster for us, please?
do it two or three. Do two or three. So this is a thruster. It's one of the exercises we use for beginners to learn how to do the front squat and start bringing the bar overhead and building their confidence. It's also CrossFit uses a lot. A lot of track and field athletes use it, full body movement. Um, so those are several different things you can do. They also can do, um, you want to take that bar and do a back squat, America? You can just clean and jerk it overhead and put it on your back. So there's different variations of squats. <laughs> Our girls are very girly. They spend more time fixing their hair and preparing their bows in their hair when they can eat. <laughs> All there's also crunches, um, medicine ball tosses, wall ball shots. Nunu has her little ball there. So Nunu, do you want to go on that wall and show them what a wall ball toss is, a wall ball shot? A wall ball shot. That's a sit up. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you just squat with the ball, toss, catch, and squat back down. So you're using your full body, you're using legs, back, core. <laughs> and who would like to demonstrate toe touches with the other medicine ball? Go ahead. <laughs> So this is for your abs. This is a great tool. So it'll work your abs and your shoulders and your lower back. Also, it works a little bit in the hamstrings. Um, and then also anywhere you're traveling, you can always do planks. Um, can I have a plank demonstration? Go, Nina. Come on. Come on. Let's see it. There you go. And so when you're bigger like Jalen, if you need a little bit of a challenge, he can be doing a plank and you can put a weight on his back, or he can do a plank and a smaller kid can plank on top of his back. And then you can layer him up. I have a, um, one of my college kids, he's a 94 kilo lifter now, and um, he's pretty large. And so him and Terry used to train together, and Terry would get on his back when they were doing planks, and they would challenge how long he could stay on his back. <laughs> so you can always add variations in that way too. So there's lots of options. There should never be a reason not to do it. You can always find a way to make it fun and interesting. You guys have anything you want to add? Any dimensions? <laughs> <laughs> and here is something we wanted, I wanted to share with you. <laughs> this is Terry this weekend breaking the national record. So, the top one is the snatch. It's this 50 kilo snatch. He broke that record before it was 45 kilos. The bottom one is the clean and jerk. This is his last one. This is 62 kilos. that are life skills, counseling, arts, um, education is one of the most important things that we push with the kids and then we have all the health and fitness with organic gardening, partnering with Healthy Savannah, partnering with other community members um, to provide nutrition classes um, and fun activities throughout the year. Um, so they have a wide variety of that to do. We partner with Savannah Christian for um, Blitz and Youth Group and then there's um, can I get you guys just to stand up here so I can say thank you? <coughs> There's one other thing that... Go across. Yeah, just go across. <laughs> thank you. They're usually not this quiet, so I don't know. <laughs> this is very unusual. <laughs> There's one other thing that um, I just wanted to share with everybody, and... That is to say congratulations. Would you three, four, turn around, please? Woohoo! Back up so you can wave it. I'll 
all three of you made the world team. What? <laughs> Championships, and part of that is because of what Terry Roberson did last year in breaking the national records and winning the title. He ranked high enough to make the total and ranking for the 15 and under youth world team, but the International Weightlifting Federation standards age is 15, and he was only 12, and they would not allow him to compete. So they created a 13 and under um, Invitational World Championships this year, specifically because of that last year. And Terry had a cast on this year for playing soccer at school. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we were fortunate enough, and he was blessed enough to uh, recover fully from that and make the world team from his results this Saturday. So uh, all of that I want to say is thank you because of your support, because none of those trips or those educational components um, would be possible if it was not for this community. Uh, pouring into these kids and the programs that they have. And they had to meet 80% or higher on all their grades to be able to go to any of those competitions to qualify. And if they don't make it, they get pulled. And Terry can tell you about that, too, because he got pulled one time. <laughs> but with that, we just want to thank you. And if you guys have any questions, um, we'll just open it up to questions, or they can answer questions or further demonstrations. They're, they'll be here available. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Yes, ma'am. Um, can you talk about the difference between rehydrate and Gatorade or all those other sports drinks? We don't promote using Gatorade or the Powerades because of the sugar levels in them. Um, what I promote is the kids drink water. Well, I finally got tired of losing my voice telling them to drink water, drink water. So if they get poked by a coach, they have to go drink water. Um, <laughs> so if they get water bottles every summer camp. If they lose their water bottles, then they get poked and they have to use the water fountain. Uh, but there's so much sugar in them, we do not promote them using them. We promote them using, um, there's the drinks like Rehydrate that just have the electrolytes um, but let no sugar. There's other things they can do is just add lemon and lime into their water that gives them the rehydrate, but no calories or sugar, and it's, it's something we can easily have accessible there for them to add to their water. Um, does that answer your question? Any other questions? <coughs> Mr. Tucker? You were talking about the uh, summer camp programs. How many kids told you you had the summer uh, health programs? Um, in all the pro this summer, we had 42 kids. At one point, we had 50. You know, we had 52 that, uh, for one week, um, but we averaged 42, during, which was the most we've ever had. But we also had the most help with um, late church came in, and we had teachers come in and volunteer. So every kid had tutorial and reading programs this summer. We had over 80%. All the kids that were there for the entire summer finished their reading programs and their projects. So the kids that were even out and out there every week, 80% of them um, finished their projects and then came back after school and finished during after school. And then um, the officers came in and talked to them. They hung out and kind of mentored and helped. And um, Officer Tucker actually came in and challenged some of my boys to go work out and <laughs> show them how it was done with the weight vest. <laughs> so that made it fun for them, and it was really humbling for them. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, then I'll hand it over to Marjorie and let you come. Uh, to Matt. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, that was uh, a lot of fun, and I appreciate you waiting to uh, tell these guys and girls about the news until we were here, because that, that was a special moment. Really, really neat to see. And congratulations to you. Uh, all you, you know, you, you're doing something very special, and uh, keep up with it. It's really cool. Our next Encourage Health, oh, and I did not mention, but all the proceeds that uh, were raised are going to performance initiatives, so uh, happy to be a part of that and help you out with that. Uh, our next luncheon will be on October 28th. Uh, it will be Bert Tenenbaum speaking. He's the Corporate Director of Wellness at Reliant Steel and Aluminum, which is the parent company of Tavis Steel. Uh, he's going to talk about corp his corporation's five waypoints on their journey to wellness, and the proceeds will benefit the YMCA of Coastal Thank you very much for being here. We'll see you next time.